Hello and welcome to another Modswell video. I'm your host Maxwell. Today I'm going to be doing another of my top 5 mods of the week videos. I'm currently playing on and building a dragon base load order with the help of my discord community. So if you want to join in, check the description for a link to that server. That's enough of an intro, let's just get down to business. In at number 5 is the reason I'm playing my female character today. Here we have Arcane Mage Armor which comes in 1k, 2k and 4k. This mod adds in a 3 piece armor set designed for female mages. However, it is considered a light armor set with actual defensive stats so would be best in the hands of someone playing as a spell sword or a tricky warrior character. It's going to work really well for those characters due to its design too. It comes across like an alternate leather armor with mage robe style patches and even some knightly elements too. That might seem like too much is going on but honestly it just looks brilliant. The stats on this armor are the same as leather which means it isn't horrifically overpowered. This suits the general ethos of a spell sword in my opinion as the magic is their power not their gear. But with that in mind, they may as well look stylish whilst going about their business. Whilst this set is female only, it does actually work on a male character. So if you want to spec into a um, very chesty boy, then be my guest. But let's pretend you didn't see this or Jerry might leave me for another YouTuber. The body might look hilarious but the boots and gauntlets surprisingly look good on a male and fit in with quite a few sets. I've been using them alongside the boiled leather armour from Fashions of the 4th Era and I actually quite like the look. The assets for this mod come from a royalty free site, which I will link in the description for other modders out there to check out just in case they want to get some new ideas. I said earlier that the mod comes in 3 different sizes. For the 1k it'll cost you 7 megabytes, 2k is 19.7 megabytes and the 4k will set you back a whopping 63.9 megabytes. In my testing I could tell the difference between the three but honestly the 1k was more than enough to please the eye and for such a small cost it will be a nice addition to any arsenal. Let's move on to my fourth favourite mod of the week. Here we have follower commentary overhaul. This mod is a really simple touch that improves the diversity of comments made by followers and it does it in a really smart way too. Let's use Mjol as an example. She happens to use the female Nord voice type, but she has say 100 lines that she might use. This is a really small pool to pull from, especially when it tries to be somewhat situationally aware, meaning you're really only hearing about 20 lines during regular play. After a while, that's going to get really, really repetitive. This mod is going to unlock the rest of the Nord female lines for her, essentially throwing that base number into the stratosphere. In doing so, it completely destroys one of the weakest elements of these vanilla followers, how repetitive they are, always using a few comment rotations such as I'm sworn to carry your burdens or some complaint about the weather. Finally, that's going to be a thing of the past, but what's really great about this mod is what's said is even relevant to what you're seeing, or even who you happen to be around. It acts similarly to a lightweight version of an ego. I mean, let's face it, nothing really comes close to our furry friend, but this mod is such a huge step in the right direction and makes those boring vanilla followers so worth having around. I'm currently using this in the build alongside followers go on a trip, immersive follower framework and stay down. This setup is making those followers useful, interesting and immersive without breaking the balance of the game whilst making them each feel like a new unique follower mod, which is excellent because when put up next to those unique followers, this is only going to cost a fraction. At 36.6 megabytes, I'm putting this down as massively worthwhile. This is going to feature in many of my orders for years to come. Let's move on to number 3. Here I'm going to choose Scry UI, another epic combo mod by Substill. Not entirely sure how this man has the time right now, but luckily for us, he does. Because this entry is saving me a ton of mod slots and allowing me to expand my UI with things I wouldn't normally have had room for. This setup includes Sky HUD with Oblivion presets which is going to move and resize your HUD elements to the bottom left and reshape the radar to a thinner, less intrusive bar at the bottom. We also get pastel map markers with the added bonus of more specific names to certain markers such as mines which now include what ore is available inside. Other top mods included are 60 FPS menus to simply speed up the more boring processes and have them feeling smoother, dynamic camera to change your entire camera setup such as positioning, field of view and zooms, we're also getting control to set up some hotkeys allowing us to instantly swap what weapons we're using or heal ourselves on the fly. On top of this we get better sleep and wait menu so you can increase those times up to 72 hours. This will help if you need vendor or dungeon resets. And finally we also get automatic sorting which will rename items in the game to something that is easier to sort. For example potions will have what they do first and strength after. This takes effect whilst at a vendor or looting and not just in your inventory. And as a quick note, I happen to restart the game pretty much every week to test these mods. 
I go to the cheat room to help speed up the process, but usually it takes a long time setting this all up. This inventory mod saved me so much hassle and is such a top tier addition for everyone. There is a hell of a lot going on in this mod. Several mainstays of my order too. So this is gonna help to massively increase what we can do in our orders without missing out on class, quality, and those little finishing touches. So that's 11 mods in one easy to use package. And as a topper, it'll only set you back a superbly fair three megabytes. There is absolutely no reason to not use this mod. In second, we have a pretty excellent mod for changing your experience in the wilds. Sivas Ran Creatures and Wildlife. This mod is a full-on retexture for all spawns in the game. We are talking dragons, draugr, dwemer automatons, and even some things that don't start with a D, like horses, falmer, bears, and wolves. Everything. I don't think I'd have the time to list them all. Clofus has been hard at work, going around, finding open perms and getting them specifically, so he could create a huge update to the game's spawns. But here's where things get even more interesting. It comes in two versions. One is designed to simply give better meshes and retextures to all those beasties. The extended version, however, is a totally different animal. Whilst it does everything the standard version does, it also looks to expand upon the wildlife in the game with new additions such as aurochs, elemental giants, giant scorpions, ice titans, kiwi birds, otters, pigeons, poison drakes, serpents and wild horses. It's a really good balance of natural fauna and enemies which make the worlds feel so much more alive and gives an extra challenge along the way. Naturally, all these additions will make the extended version more costly, but not as much as you might think. With the standard coming in at 198.6 megabytes and the extended at 251.6. For the longest time, I have been an avid user of real wildlife, which I would usually pair with Skyrim Creature Overhaul. I used this setup for coverage and additions. It was unmatched, but that's not the case anymore. Sivas Ran is covering far more and adding in a lot of similar features for just a touch more cost. But the coverage means I don't need to use anything for my Dwemer, the Falmar, for Alduin or the Draugr, Spriggans or about 10 other spawns. The sheer effort that has gone into this setup is going to make it a no-brainer going forward. It's a shame that I don't have the time to go through and give credit to each and every author being used in this pack. So what I will do is leave a link to both versions of this mod where Clothus has been helpful enough to have done it for me. And now it's time for my favourite mod of the week, Sensible Hotkeys and Outfits. This one requires a little backstory. There I was, minding my own business, winding down for the night, just looking through Reddit when a message popped up. It was none other than the questionably named author of this mod. Um, I'm not sure I can say the name without being demonetized. Anyway, he asked if I wouldn't mind testing it, and naturally I obliged because I'm always curious. I headed over to the work in progress section to check it out and see if I needed to give any notes. What I found was a perfectly working answer to the hotkeys conundrum. Sensible hotkeys and outfits comes with every single bell and whistle needed to swap between or use literally anything. It allows you to store entire builds and switch between them at the tap of a button. This includes weapons, spells, armors, jewelry, shouts, powers, everything. If you can equip it, you can set it and change between it. Simply set up your loadout and enter the menu book. Deposit all of the items you need into the set you're making and this will lock it into a potion. Favourite that potion and alongside the mod control, which is included in the mod scry UI which I spoke of earlier, and presto, you will be able to swap between mage to archer to warrior on the fly. And for once, your entire build will change. I was messing around and trying to swap between polar opposite characters, so I'd one moment be entering as an archer in light armour, kitted out with all the right enchants and my jewellery to do extreme damage with my arrows. Then I'd swap to a mage in my best robes and again geared up to get the best out of the spells then into heavy armour with a sword and shield or two-handed. The possibilities were opened up to me massively with this mod. Sure, that style of play may not be immersive, but even so, you get the point. Using this mod is going to allow you to effectively make builds that you can change between to suit your scenario. Beyond all this, we also get a superbly intelligent potion mechanic. Again, load up the menu and store your potions in the requisite section. Then, this mod will allow you to do a magical thing. Say you need health. Favourite the potion that relates to those stored vials and tap once. Boom, you're healing. You need stamina, tap the same button twice and there it is. And for Magicka, tap it three times. You can even tell the mod what order of potion to use in the menu. I, for example, use weakest potion first, but that choice is yours to make. There is no hotkey companion mod that even comes close to this. I have always been a huge fan of weapon set hotkeys, but this is going to do exactly what that mod does and 50 times more. I will admit that this has a steeper learning curve, 
But the second that you have it figured out, this mod will be one of your new best friends in combat, allowing for what is essentially endless possibilities all within the reach with no menus needed. And as a sweet cherry on top, it will only set you back 1.6 megabytes. You cannot afford to not use this mod. Just set it up at the start of play and update it as you see fit. This is the perfect companion for players who love using somewhat varying styles. For those spell swords or paladins, for anyone who wants to open up their game to new mechanics that make it feel more like an RPG as it fits those basic elements, expect to see this mod in many future load orders. And on that, I am going to call it. To continue the conversation, head over to my Discord channel. You'll find a link to that in the description below. If this has helped, I would seriously appreciate those likes, comments, and of course subscriptions. They let me know that you want to see more content like this, and have the side benefit of helping me defeat YouTube's evil algorithm. Either way, Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.